Well, we're at it again. Another road trip. It's uh, the end of May and 2023. We're getting ready to go to the southern United States, uh, Texas, and then westward all the way to California. We won't be doing a lot of videotaping between here and there because we run over that uh, territory so many times. However, we will be entering the state of, uh, well, the country of Mexico at Baja, California, and we're going to run it all the way down to Cabo San Lucas. And we'll spend a few days there and, and uh, kind of get the dust blown off of us and then coming back. So for the, for the California, uh, Baja, California portion, uh, Baja, we will be uh, documenting that and uh, we'll be talking more a little later. In the meantime, let's get on this motorcycle. Get on the road. We finally are on the road. This is the first few miles of our round trip from Indianapolis to Cabo San Lucas in the country of Mexico and the state of Baja California Sur. The entire trip will prove to be 7,653 miles over the next three weeks. We are not making a beeline to Mexico. Our plan is to enjoy the ride and visit friends along the way. We'll pass through St. Louis and spend a night in Branson, Missouri. The following evening will find us in Austin, Texas, having dinner with a friend. The next day will be spent in El Paso, Texas, and then on to Phoenix, Arizona. Here we will spend two nights and, yes, you guessed it, visiting more friends. On our sixth day of the trip, we cross the border at Mexicali and Calexico into the state of Baja California and the country of Mexico. Let me say at the onset that we are riding a street bike, Goldwing, that has been converted into a trike. We don't, we don't have a lot of road clearance. We are not looking for the same kind of ride you might take on an adventure-style motorcycle. We're not looking for trails or even curved roads to see how fast we can corner. Just a nice, leisurely road trip. Preparation for the trip to Mexico was started a few weeks before the actual trip. I sent for maps and a guidebook, which was helpful in finding the route we would follow as well as lodging along the way. You will need a passport before you leave the U.S. You will need to purchase a Mexican vehicle insurance as our U.S. insurance is not recognized there. Also you might want to check with your health insurance agent to make sure that you are covered inside of Mexico. At the border into Mexico, you will need to secure an FMM, or tourist permit. They're available online so that you don't have to waste time getting one at the border. However, I tried for several weeks to get one online only to be told it was not available due to the computer system being down. If you wish for help to secure insurance and other needs, you can always call the Baja Travel Club out of San Diego. The number is 800-727-2252. When we crossed the border into Mexico, I expected to stop and show my passport. I expected to park somewhere and enter a building for our tourist permits. However, an official traffic person wanted us to continue on into the country without stopping. We did stop and ask about the tourist permit. He seemed annoyed at our holding back traffic. He shook his head no and pointed forcefully to the road that led on into the town of Mexicali. We had no opportunity to get the tourist permit. Yeah. Around the circle? Yeah. You get a map? Then you go that way, yeah. 
You can expect to run into numerous inspection stations while traveling by vehicle in Mexico. The first one we ran into was between Mexicali and Ensenada. The inspection officer was nice, but inspected us thoroughly, looking into every compartment of the motorcycle and our luggage. However, no one ever asked to see our passports or our tourist permit, which of course we didn't have. We stayed at the uh, Torre Lucerna Hotel in Ensenada. It's a good idea to make reservations in all of the Baja's hotels and resorts ahead of a trip. Most reservations are refundable with some advance notice. The next day, we follow the west coast of the Pacific Ocean down to San Quentin. It was a short day's ride, but put us in a good position to be able to make it to the next night's stop in Malegue, which would have us cross out of the state of Baja California and into the state of Baja California Sur. Be sure you pay attention to gasoline needs for your vehicle. Our motorcycle had a range of about 200 miles. We expected to buy gasoline at the only station that was about 180 miles away. When we arrived at the gas station, it was permanently closed. The check of our GPS for fuel confirmed no gasoline for more than 100 miles in any direction. A check with the locals revealed our salvation. Down the road, a couple miles, we would see a pickup truck sitting beside the road. A sign beside the truck would declare gasoline. We had no choice but to look for the pickup truck. The gasoline was sold in lots of five gallons. If you needed more than five gallons, then you would have to buy ten gallons, even if you couldn't use all the next can of gas. The price for five gallons of gasoline? <laughs> Around $50 US. They said the filling station we had expected to buy gas at had been built but was never allowed to open. The highway is paved all the way down to the end of the Bajas, except where there is construction. Sometimes we would be routed onto a dirt path alongside of the construction area. The paths were not maintained very well and contained large holes and high bumps, lots of dust from trucks and other traffic, and sometimes oozy and deep mud. My trike was stable in the mud, but I doubt even an adventure bike could have made it through that thick and deep mess of mud. These temporary roads are often a mile or more long, with speeds of, well, less than 10 miles per hour. Miles. Then turn right on Francisco and Madero. Just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> no. Francisco and Madero. No, you go around. Yeah, parking. I guess, but there's a ball coming out. <laughs>
find that ball. <laughs> Arriving at Francisco Amadero, on right. I think the blue one. Malege was our next and last stop for the night before we arrive at uh, Cabo San Lucas. We stayed at the Hacienda Malege Motel. It was secure, but the rooms were basic. English was non-existent, making reservations and check-in a bit more challenging. Everyone was very nice. The highway from San Quentin to Malegue crosses us from the west coast to the east coast and along the shoreline of the Sea of Cortez, or the Gulf of California. We ran down the east coast to just south of uh, Loreto in Baja California, Sur. From there, the highway took us back west to run more central in the peninsula. However, at La Paz, we get another glimpse of the Gulf of California to the east. From La Paz, we make a deep dive to the south. We are following Route 1. South of La Paz is a junction of Route 1 and Route 19. Both go to Cabo San Lucas. We continue on Route 1, even though it is a longer way, because we thought the condition of that highway would be better. Upon arrival at Cabo San Lucas, we choose to stay at the Grand Mayan at Vedanta Los Cabos. This resort is about 30 minutes from the town of Cabo San Lucas. Here we will spend four nights relaxing and getting rested up for our return trip back to Indianapolis. A surprise I had prepared for Danny, our photographer for this trip, was a reservation to go deep sea fishing. It was a first time experience for him. On board at 6 a.m. at the marina in Cabo San Lucas, I could only hope he would have beginner's luck and catch something. And he did.
A real nice rooster fish. It was a lot of work to reel in his catch, more than 15 minutes, but it made his day, as well as the captain's day, as he hoisted his fish on board flags for the return to dock. Also happy was the taxidermy company that would mount the fish. A great day all around. And the day only cost right at $3,000 for fishing and fish mounting. The Baja portion of the return trip back to Indianapolis was pretty much just a repeat of the ride down to Cabo San Lucas. We stayed at the same hotels that we used on the way down. However, we planned to cross the border back into the U.S. at Takata because Tijuana was very busy and the wait time excessive. Arriving at Takata offered one last adventure. Yeah, I think we go back to the main street and then see how. Damn, this one looks so scary. No matter how hard we looked and no matter how well we followed the GPS, we could not find the end of the line and the lineup of vehicles to cross the border. Every street the GPS turned us on ended in a barricade. We were a bit frustrated as I stopped at a stoplight and then a policeman on a motorcycle pulled up beside us. Great, I thought. If he speaks English, I will ask him how to get to the end of the line for the border crossing. But before I could ask, he informed us that we had failed to stop at a stop sign. And that would be 100 US dollars as he reached out his hand. We knew of no stop sign we had failed to stop at, but the stop signs in Mexico are not as easily spotted as in the US, so it was possible we missed a sign, even though both of us were looking. I looked at him, thought about it for a second, then handed him a $100 bill. As he put it in his pocket, I said, Sir, for $100, I believe we deserve a police escort to the head of the line to cross the border. He hesitated, looked back at me, then said with a smile, Okay. <laughs> we were back in the good old U.S. of A. in no time. From there we visited some friends in Orange County, California, and then enjoyed a few days in Las Vegas before heading back to Indy. So that is our Baja motorcycle trip. Happy motorcycling, everyone. <laughs>